Da, 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 the Bake Bake Down. Welcome to the Bake Down Podcast, where we discuss hot takes on hot bakes. So this is our very first episode, so bear with us as we do this for the first time. Yeah. I, we talk about things all the time. Ollie and I are very good friends, but uh, we wanted to discuss kind of the mm, spicier side, I guess, of mm -hmm. baking. I feel like the baking world in general is quite neutral, really. How much drama can there be over cake? But I feel like over the years there there is, and I feel like there's no platform to really talk about it and discuss mm -hmm. it. We've definitely had a lot of deep, in-depth conversations about just baking in general, but we've never done it on camera, so... <laughs> so here we are, here discussing we it with you guys. <laughs> um, so we will do this every week. We're not really sure quite yet what the output of content is going to look like right now, but we do know we're going to have some sort of weekly upload. So really, really excited that you guys are joining us, and you are the first to view this Bake Down podcast. Welcome. <laughs> okay, um, so I have something special to share with you. Now, I know that I briefly talked about this with you before, but we're gonna discuss Cake Gate today. Okay. Okay, I've talked about Cake Gate on my main channel. Um, by the way, all of our Instagram information, if you wanna see our main channels where we actually make tutorials and we don't just talk, you can go ahead and check those out in the pinned comment below. Um, but a lot of my audience is like, what are you talking about, Ashley? What is Cake Gate? <laughs> so I am going to show you what Cake Gate is. Can so you imagine dyeing all those cake layers though every single time? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of buttercream. It's a fun idea. Yeah. I have to say, the way that she decorated that cake was very interesting to me. Because mm -hmm. when I've done sprinkle cakes in past, usually I get like a big tray mm -hmm. and then put all the sprinkles flat on it. Oh, interesting. Then I take my cake and I roll it in there. Right, I have seen lots of people do that. I feel like every time I've done it, it's been like, which wasn't very many times, but yeah. it's been like the way that she did it, except I did have a tray underneath so that I could like put the sprinkles in my hand and then Totally, and, and she might have, mm -hmm. we don't know because she mm -hmm. cut the video, mm -hmm. you know, a little editing magic as we, as we all do. Yeah. Um, okay. So now I'm going to show you the follow up video that ensued after that. Still working out the formatting issues of our baking podcast, so please forgive us, but basically this little video sums up exactly what happened. Alia actually watched the entire TikTok drama and all the ensuing videos, but basically the store owner complained about a customer, and then that customer showed what cake she received, and then the store owner clapped back. Many things. There's, there's <laughs> many, many issues going on here. First, let's talk about the actual technique that was used to create the cake. So we uh -huh. both agree that, yeah, you can totally create the sprinkle cake by pulling up the sprinkles, putting it on the side. Mm -hmm. For me though, in order to create um, a cleaner edge on things, like especially with a sprinkle cake, because you're gonna you're gonna end up with rounded sides if yeah. you do it like those that rounded kind of top part. So right. that's why I do like to do it where I actually flip that cake completely upside down and after you roll and everything like that you flip the cake completely upside down and you have the cake board on top yeah and then you go put it in the fridge so then when you take it out it's just this really nice flat top with good edges yeah so that to me though is so minor mm -hmm. like some people don't do it that way but you can see in the photo that there's like frosting on the sides of yeah. the sprinkle cake but to me that's way less of a big deal like how many times do we make mistakes or don't do mm -hmm. things as clean things as cleanly as we should yeah no big deal that's definitely not something that that i noticed it was more the writing on top was i know <laughs> the idea of putting like a flat circle of buttercream and then piping on top with more buttercream because like Obviously, it's covered in sprinkles. You want to be able to read the writing. Mm -hmm. um, and it could have also been done with, like, a fondant plaque or something. But but just, why did the writing look so messy? Yeah, and, like, if, if you've never decorated cakes with buttercream before, it is a faster pipe. Like, I mm -hmm. will say, it's a lot easier to do writing with something like royal icing. It's mm -hmm. slower. There's more time. There's more give. But there are so many ways to get that writing on that cake, like you said. Yeah. And and you don't even have to be good at it. Like, 
uh, personally, writing is one of my stronger points. Like, I mm -hmm. am able to pipe writing. But I've seen cake artists where that isn't their strong point, so they either print an edible image that yes. says, like, happy birthday or whatever, or you get a projector and you project onto, um, you can you can either project directly onto the cake yeah. and then you can just pipe whatever you need to pipe over top, yeah. over top. Or you can also do it in royal icing and place a royal uh, icing plaque on there. Or you could cut out fondant cut letters. Cut out fondant letters. Top. Like, there's a lot of things Th that you can There do. is. And, and yeah, I think the pricing is going to change depending on what it is that you mm -hmm. would have to do, like fondant lettering. Yeah, that's going to be more expensive. So it could have been a case of her trying to keep it within that price range, mm -hmm. but there's still no reason that it should be... I feel like it should have at least been like... Uniform letters is what uh -huh. we're looking for. If you actually take a look at fonts, there are some fonts that are very messy. Like if you look at the individual letter, it's messy. But if you see an A or something that looks messy, but it's messy over and over and over again, mm -hmm. it becomes a font. Yeah. So it's it's that for me. It was like the big and the small Yeah. happening. I just felt like it should have, like I could barely read it. <laughs> yeah. And it did look like what that person said. It looked like it had been dropped almost because it was just so mushy almost. Yeah. yeah. And, and I do think that the choice of black was an interesting choice too. Again, just a stylistic thing. But if you are prone to making errors on writing, which I used to all the time, go for something like a blue mm -hmm. or like a pink. Something that yeah. can be scraped off really easily and try again. That's also what's interesting. Yeah, but we don't know, too, if the customer requested black specifically. We don't. Like, that's it, the thing. But easily, buttercream can be scraped. Totally. Right? Like, it could be like, I'm not happy with this. Try again. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the technique of freezing your buttercream. So, because the plaque itself, when you look at it, it's like not really a plaque almost. Yeah. It's kind of on top of the sprinkles. It and looks like they piped it right on top and then spread it out it, to get it flat. Yeah, which never works because you've yeah. got this bed of sprinkles underneath yeah. and so it's going to look like concrete and gravelly. Yeah. So, yeah, I really think that it could have been like a buttercream <clears throat> disc or something like that. Pop it in the freezer, take it off. I mean, those are the technical stuff, it's like, okay, sure, everyone can technically be better. I've made some cakes on this channel, but I'm like, oh no, that's not great, but whatever. Um, we all do it. Yeah. But it was, it was for me, the complaining publicly yeah. about it. Uh-huh. And then with that follow-up video saying, you don't know the whole backstory and you guys have no lives. It's like, well, you put that out on the internet. Obviously, people are going to talk about it. Completely. And <laughs> this is something that um, I, I've really had a long, I guess, history of thinking about this is my my main profession is teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's you have to be professional. And I think sometimes because we have so many bakers and, and artists and everybody on TikTok, mm -hmm. it creates this really unprofessional environment. Mm -hmm. And like, People just lose sight of the fact that, no, 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 it stays on there forever. Yeah. Even if you take down the video after, whatever you said still stays on there. Mm -hmm. And people do forget, but not for a long time. Yeah. And I feel like when you're running a small, basically it's, it's like a mom and pop business. Uh -huh. How are you going to recover from millions and millions of people yeah watch something like that especially with like cancel culture nowadays it's so easy for people to just be like nope you're done and that's it and, and people that have, for you. and people that have never visited your bakery before just inundating your google page yeah. and then all of a sudden you're like a one on google yeah and people would lie on those reviews uh huh so i just wonder i wonder what was the going through this baker's mind? I feel like what it is, especially on TikTok, is the clout. Like you want something that's drama, something that's controversial, something that will get lots of attention because that's what gets the views on TikTok. And right? it did. Yeah. It did. And I find it interesting because, well, us Canadians, we don't get paid for mm -hmm. TikTok. So I think that in America, they do get paid, but it's still not right. a lot. Like. 
Um, for those of you that are not in like the social media world, YouTube pays probably the best out of all of the platforms um, and consistently. Whereas something like TikTok, it's all over the place. So it's interesting that you're saying she, she would want to do it for clout when it's like, what is that clout worth? Like five bucks? I don't know. I don't even know what the conversion is. I don't know either for TikTok because, yeah, I did post on TikTok back in 2020, but then I... And you were pretty big. You had like mm-hmm. millions. I definitely like had lots of, uh, uh, quite a few videos that went viral. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I never made any money from those videos. Like money that came from TikTok. Yeah. It was, like I got lots of emails of people being like, I want to send you a product. Right, like brand like deals. A, yeah, like mm-hmm. a brand deal kind of thing. But I was too afraid to do any of that in the beginning. But for that's sure. the only way to make money on TikTok as yeah. a Canadian, I think. I don't know for sure. Yeah. But I, I don't think anybody has like the same contract that they do with YouTube in mm-hmm. Canada. Maybe yeah. if you're like huge, huge. But Maybe. I don't I don't, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's and then you're so right about negativity being the thing that sells. Like, yeah. On, because there's like so many other creators um, who are business owners who do like hair and stuff like that, makeup, and yeah. they all talk about their bad customers, but they just get more popular for it. So I, I feel like that's why people think like, oh, this person's doing it. It's okay for me to do it too. I know. Okay. I have, I'm going to be honest here. I've talked about customers on my channel mm-hmm. um, and not always great experiences. But I change a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. I never show what the actual product that I'm talking about was. I never give defining details. And I also only tell stories from like 12 plus years ago. So in the event that even they remember what I'm talking about, they probably don't even know it's me, you know? So it's like you got to weigh out how worth it it is right Mm -hmm. and according to the original story and the girl who countered back the customer who countered back she wasn't going to say anything publicly she wasn't even going to leave like a review yeah and now it's because she called her and was like this crazy customer yelled at me and didn't want to pay this amount for this cake that i made yeah and i think that's the one kind of aspect in the caking world that can get a little bit dramatic Uh if anything's going to get dramatic it's this the customer is always wrong rhetoric you know it's like sometimes the customer is not wrong yeah like I can fully admit that there have been times where I'm like yeah that is not good (laughs) I'm going to refund you for that or I'm going to or I've I've already said hey this isn't up to par Mm -hmm. let me redo it I'm sorry that your event is like right now so just take it or you know like but don't you do you feel that way that I mean, you've, you've worked in the industry mm-hmm. um, a lot more closely than I have. I have. I switched over to social media like a few years ago. Yeah. So, but I remember when working in this type of establishment, it's, it, it is very much like customers get blinked a lot. I definitely see that a lot too. And I do see sometimes mistakes get made and we notice it, but then it's just like, oh, um, well, it happened. It's too much work to go back and fix it, so we'll just suffer the consequences. Or I've seen a lot of times where it's like, oh, we made that mistake, but, okay, this is really me spilling the tea. We made a mistake, but let's just let it go. And if the customer doesn't say anything, great. Yeah. If the customer does say something, then obviously, yeah, we have to rectify the situation. Yeah. Do you think that in most cases you should divulge this was not done the right way? Uh Uh-huh. Or do you think it is better for business and for the happiness of the customer to just, or the contentedness, I should say, of the customer to just be like, I'm just going to let it go unless they say something? I feel like it's better to just go back and fix your mistake before the customer sees it because... Like, yeah, you might save yourself some time and the customer might just be like, oh, yeah, it's nice, and take it. But, like, they could still be feeling, like, on the inside, like, oh, like, they might notice and they might be feeling like, oh, it's really not what I asked for, but it still looks nice, so I'm just going to take it anyways. But that'll still be in the back of their mind and they're going to go tell everybody that's at the party, yeah, I wanted it to be this way, but it looks this way, which is still nice, but they didn't follow 
completely. what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is my confession. I feel like sometimes I can be a bit of a Karen. I know. <laughs> I know. Like, I really try to be nice about it. I'm like, not the type that's going to be, like, yelling and raising my voice or yeah. anything like that. But, like, I am very meticulous. Uh -huh. So, if I paid for something very, very specifically, I am going to be like, hey, you need to fix that. That's not being a Karen. No, but it's like, that's just... I know. Okay. I shouldn't say Karen, and I'm sorry if your name is Karen. I think it's been a really rough go for Karens in the yeah. past, like, ten years. Um, but, like, five years. But I will say that me being more on that side of the, the person that is going to speak up, there are people. Like, I think my sister is very much, like, if it's, like, really wrong, she would still be like, it's fine. Uh -huh. But then be, like, seething behind closed doors about how wrong it is, right? Oh, interesting. You're yeah. right, though. We don't know who those customers necessarily yeah. are. Yeah. And you can lose your customer so quickly mm -hmm. from the smallest of things. Oh, yeah, totally. Because how many bakeries are there? Yeah. In our area, tons. So many. <laughs> I, I'm surprised when I hear people opening up more bakeries. Me too. To be honest. Every time, because I'm like... Really? There's so many. It's so saturated. And uh -huh. the more saturated you go, the higher your bar has to be. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes people can, and I have no idea if this cake lady thought that, but I think sometimes when you feel like you have a hold of the market, uh -huh. you get a little complacent mm -hmm. where you're just kind of like, eh, I have majority of the market. So sure, you're going to fulfill XYZ order. Yeah. But you know, when you're first starting out selling cakes, you're like getting your ruler out and making sure that you're putting yeah. every single thing on right. with like tweezers, right? And yeah. and and being that meticulous because you have the time to be that meticulous. Mm -hmm. But then as you grow, you get a little bit more like, well, I have a lot of other customers, so you know, definitely, yeah. And and I think these are things that most bakers wouldn't say. Right. Most owners are not going to say this publicly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I I just think that that. Our, is our natural human mind. Yeah. To just, you you do kind of pull back a little bit. Uh -huh. Like even in video editing, like in some videos, well, it's a little bit different for me because I was when I was uploading every day, I was like, whatever it is, it goes. <laughs> like I was like, who cares? Like uh -huh. I made a mistake, whatever. Yeah. Now I am actually a little bit more meticulous, uh -huh. but definitely there were like stages of like, yeah, I'm really meticulous. And then like, okay, I can like back off a little bit. Yeah. Kind of thing. No, I feel that too, except mine's the opposite. I was more like, every video needs to be perfect, mm. the most beautiful thumbnail, and now I'm just like, oh, I kind of messed up on that voiceover. But it's fine. Everyone will understand what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really wonder where Kate Gate Lady is now. Why is it called Kate Gate, too? I never, okay, so I never knew that. Okay, so anything Gate is because it's like this dramatic thing that happens. Uh -huh. So it could be like hair gate oh. or I don't actually know if they called this, but the gorilla glue incident where she put the gorilla glue in her hair. And what? About that. Have you been under a rock? <laughs> Side note, she put gorilla glue in her hair because she was trying to get really nice and like sharp and, uh -huh. and um, really like laid to her head. And she put gorilla glue in her hair. Oh my. And then she had to get it surgically removed. Oh my. Yeah. So it's just like viral moments like that referred to as whatever gate. I always wondered if it had something to do with gatekeeping. No, I don't I think like, so. Why? Then again, I didn't know that, um, oh, what was it? Riz? Riz? Med Charisma? Yeah. Well, she teaches me oh all the God. lingo, <laughs> all the young lingo. This is Wait, but how do you know so much of this stuff too? Because you don't even have TikTok. Right. No, I don't have a TikTok. Right. But a lot of these things come through on shorts. Right. Yeah. And that's where you... And I primarily watch right. shorts. And that's where I learned about Kate Gate mm. as well. And other big channels that just cover drama in general covered Kate Gate. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's why I was like, you know, four months ago when we thought of this, uh -huh. I was like, we need to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> We're a little late to the game, but... Um, I didn't even know that it was that big at first because like I'd never seen the original I just heard about it from mm. like another couple accounts on TikTok like yeah. when I was just scrolling but then I started realizing it was so big when like my mom sent it to me and then you sent it to me 
And then I heard people at work talking about it. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> and can you imagine somebody talking about your tiny little bakery? Yeah. In, like, Albuquerque. That's not where it was. I'm just making it up. <laughs> but, like, and they're talking about it. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, luckily, have not um, suffered any controversy uh -huh. uh, because I keep things very on my channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I can't imagine. In, like, her area, what was going on, too? Yeah. Because, like, even, like, when I think about my first viral video on TikTok, I basically made this giant bubble tea cake for uh, one of my friend's birthdays, and it went really viral. It's got, like, over 40 million views wow. or something. And I was just thinking it was people, like, everywhere all over the world, right? Like, nobody yeah. here. But then I remember when my sister started high school, she told me, like, a couple times people saw her talking to me, and they were like, is that your sister? And she'd be like, yeah. And they're like, does she bake? She'd be like, yeah. How do you know that? And they're like, I think I saw her on TikTok one time. I, I know. Like, what? My principals have seen my 20 million video. Really? And were like, I knew it was you because of your voice. Because I very rarely show my face in shorts. Mm -hmm. But it was my voice. And I was like, that is just showing me even further how careful I need to be about yeah. what I say. Um, so yeah, I just, I find it interesting. And, and I think I'm kind of like a, in a weird place where for me, I'm never going to go back to selling again. Right. Like I know that 1000%. I'm never going to go back to selling custom cakes. Mm -hmm. I thought about selling things like my own bakeware line or things like that, but never in that regard. Yeah. So it's so interesting to me that people are willing to just forego professionalism yeah. and to, to go viral. Yeah. Do you think she knew that it was going to go that viral? No one can know that it's going to go that viral. I don't think she knew it was going to go that viral, but she definitely wanted to get views, right? Yeah, because why else would you say it? We yeah. all want views, okay? Uh -huh. Let's be real here. You're <laughs> on social media to get views. Yeah. And and I think that some but that type of notoriety, I'm just like, it's... It's shocking to me that uh, someone would want that. She definitely didn't think that everyone would be against her, too. She thought she was going to... I bet she thought she was going to um, have people go, Oh, my God, that customer is crazy. Everyone's so entitled I, nowadays. I know, and that's circling back to the rhetoric and the narrative that we have in these bake shops. Yeah. Where the customer is always wrong. The customer is always crazy. Yeah, they're always crazy. Uh -huh. And I, I <laughs> hate that that is the type of talk. Yeah. Because why can't it be gosh, we made a mistake. Yeah. Or, you know what? It doesn't look like the picture. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, but does this come down to creativity? And does this come down to how the order was taken in the first place? Right. So, like, in cake gate situation, no. Because it's a standard, apparently a standard sprinkle rainbow cake. Yeah. So, the, the, that's it. That's the standard. Yeah. But when it comes to more customized cake and then the argument of it doesn't look like how I want it to look like, uh -huh. are we being clear at the front line enough to say, okay, just so you know, customer, it's yeah. not going to look exactly the same. Yeah. And I feel like that's why a lot of bakeries nowadays, too, like, don't do custom cakes anymore because it's is never 100% clear. Yeah. Like, a lot of places will still offer, like, custom-esque cakes, but you can only choose from, like, a catalog. Oh, but I yeah. mean... And they say, too, like, with this design, you can definitely customize the colors, or we can do different... Like, if it has images on it, we can do whatever images you want, or do whatever logo you want, but it's always, like... Like, you can't just come in and be like, I want this giant 3D wow. pyramid cake. Yeah. That makes me kind of sad, though. Because I feel like when I was younger and I, I didn't really know much about cakes, that is what was fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. That you could just bring in a picture and be like, create this, right? Yeah. But no, there's definitely, like, not too, too many places that do that anymore. Wow. Because I remember it used to be, like, almost every single bakery did have that option. But yeah. now a lot of people are like, no, it's just easier for us to just give you the options yeah. and that's what you choose. Yeah. And I think the, the complaints would obviously be diminished Yeah, for sure. Cause I think the reason that this happens is a lot of buyer's remorse. It's a lot of like, Oh my gosh, I spent $800 on this cake uh -huh. and it, it looks similar, but not enough for me to pay mm -hmm. $800. It's like, I'm willing to pay $800 for the thing in the picture. Yeah. But I'm not willing to pay $800 for what I see in front of me. Right. 
Yeah. And that's where it gets so tricky. Mm -hmm. But you know what's not tricky? Not calling out your customers publicly. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if I could give any advice whatsoever to entrepreneurs, don't talk about your customers. Unless it's a really positive story. Yeah. Like, she loved it, and she cried, and yeah. I cried, and it was so magical. <laughs> but then you gotta, you gotta ask permission, like, yeah. if you're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And and if you are going to talk about something negative, like, make it so that you don't, you change things. Yeah. You can, trust me, I have told a lot of stories, and I've changed a lot of things. Uh -huh. That customer would never know that. And it's still the essence of truth in the story, because I do believe that truth is what makes a successful channel, but you gotta you gotta change some things so yeah. it's not as recognizable because you don't want someone clapping back like that. Like that. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for our very first podcast. We're sorry if there's awkward moments or weird parts in there. Mm -hmm. uh, join in on the conversation and write what you think down below. Sorry for that abrupt ending, guys. We're still having some technical things, but I promise we'll get it right on the next one. But do let us know down in the comments below, what do you think? Are you on the side of the baker who aired out their complaints, or are you on the side of team customer? Let us know down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know when we upload next. Bye, guys.